All right, well, welcome everyone. I am JJ. Let's tackle an example problem. So we're saying in this one, let's determine the average normal stress in member AB, which has a diameter of 30 millimeters. And then additionally, let's determine the average shear stress here in pin A. Um, and we assume that the pin has a diameter of five millimeters and it's in double shear for us. Um, so let's go for it. If I'm gonna get to that average normal stress, I need to know my force in this member. Also, the force in that member is going to dictate how much force is pushing in on my pin at A. So really, let's get FAB. If I'm setting this up, I would recognize, hey, AB is a two-force member. So let's mark that off. I have forces at A and at B. Um, so my resultant force here is going to go straight along the member. It's either going to be in tension or in compression for us. Um, but if I'm trying to find that, I need to know my free body diagram. So I can set up equilibrium equations. So let's come in and make a free body diagram here. So we have our beam, it's just a horizontal line. At C, I would have CY going up. And let's go CX goes to the left. I know two meters in, right in the middle of this beam, there is a 2,000 Newton force coming straight down. And I know over here at B, I'd have, remember AB, um, it's two meters away from my 2000. Going down here, I have F, AB, that force in member AB. And we're given that from horizontal up to the member is 60 degrees. That means that from horizontal down to the member, this angle right here, we're also 60 degrees. Um, and I can start trying to find this. I can actually get FAB without finding CX and CY. It wouldn't hurt us to find those, we just don't have to. Uh, if we sum moments at C, we get rid of CX, CY. We have only FAB left as an unknown. So let's go there. Uh, if I take positive, goes counterclockwise. And I'm gonna sum up my moments about point C. I would get in here, well my 2000 causes a counterclockwise rotation. So 2,000 times my distance is two. Um, FAB's Y component will cause a counterclockwise rotation in here. Um, so plus FAB sine 60 force times my distance is four. Gets us to zero, two plus two is four. The X component here passes through C. It's not gonna get any moment in there. But if I solve this out, I'm going to get that FAB is negative 1155 newtons. Which that negative just means I guessed the wrong direction here. It's really acting up, squeezing into that pin. Um, if we drew that out, if it's squeezing into the pin here, that means it's also squeezing in onto the member itself. So I could really report this as FAB is 1155 newtons, and we're in compression. We're compressing in there. It's in compression at our pin B. It's in compression everywhere for us. Um, we have to work with that. So let's go on and take a look just at our member then. So we're gonna say we can make a cut if we're dealing with average stress, really anywhere in here. Um, I could draw in my 60 degree member, and I'm making that cut somewhere in here. Um, and really, I'm saying I'm squeezing in on this. F-A-B, F-A-B. Uh, but counteracting that, I could show a single F-A-B as well. If I'm dealing with stress though, let's just come in and show this. We have average stresses in here. I really have a sigma av. And that's all I'm trying to find for that normal stress. What is sigma av? Sigma av, I know, it's just going to be my FAB force divided by my area of AB. And I should have all those pieces. Um, my sigma AV is going to get me, well, my force is 1155 divided by my area. We're given a diameter in here was 30 millimeters. I could use pi r squared, pi times 15 squared. If I'm given a diameter, I'm just going to 
use pi times diameter squared over 4. Diameter squared over 4 is the same thing as radius squared. Um, I just don't have to adjust this. I'll let my calculator do the work for us. Um, but it gets us the same point. So divide by pi times diameter 30 squared over 4. Uh, if we think through units here, we had for sigma or for our force, we are in newtons. So a newton on the top. On the bottom, our radius was in millimeters. So squaring that radius, we have millimeters squared. Um, a newton per millimeter squared gets us a megapascal coming out. So we'll report our answer using MPA for this. Sigma av. Sigma av is really going to get us to 1.634. Mega Pascals, which is our first answer for our problem. From there, we can go on and say, well, what about our shear stress? So we're looking at pin A down here. And we're told we're in double shear for us. Um, really, if we think of like grabbing my pen here, if I try to grab my pen, you still use a brighter color on there. If I'm grabbing my pen, um, I have one finger pulling to the right here, two fingers pulling to the left, um, I am in double shear for that. That might look flipped around in the video, um, but one going one direction to the opposite, we have double shear. If this were to break and my bolt were to fail, let's sketch our bolt really quick so we can talk through that. We have a bolt here, and I know I have pulling to the right, or pushing on it actually because we're in compression, I'm going to have 1155. That's my FAB. But then resisting that, I have forces on the top and bottom going the opposite direction in here. Um, 1155 over 2. 1155 over 2. Um, if this failed, I'm going to have to shear this two different times. Once to get it away from the top, once to get it away from the bottom. We're in double shear on that. Um, that means to get to my shear force, I'm going to say my V is FAB divided by 2. Um, and again, just to be super clear, that's because double shear. Because double shear. If we were in single shear, which does happen a good bit as well for design of connections, um, our shear would just be FAB. We only have to rip it one time. Our shear is the exact same thing in here. But well, I can find my shear then. My V will be 1155 over 2. That shear force with a little bit of rounding here is 577 newtons. Uh, once I get to V, I can then get to, well, my shear stress in the bolt should be my force divided by the area of the bolt. So my tau av, tau av should be my V divided by the area of the bolt. Um, or this is going to get me, or the pin, bolt, same thing. Um, but this is going to get me my shear, we just said was 577, divided by the area. Um, well, I'm given a diameter in here is 5 millimeters. So divided by pi times diameter, 5 squared over 4, pi d squared over 4, is going to get me that my average shear stress in this bolt, tau av, is going to be 29.4, and we'll check our units. Uh, we have newtons for our shear. We had millimeters squared for a diameter squared, newtons per square millimeter, um, again, consistently what we want to put into our equations are newtons and square millimeters, newtons and millimeters, because that way we get mega pascals coming out. One newton per millimeter squared is one mega pascal. Um, that would be our final answer for our problem. Hopefully this is a useful video for us. If it was, hit those like and subscribe buttons. Stick around, watch more videos. Let's get you an A with JJ.